Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the presentation. Today, I'm going to talk about the national debt and its relation to federal grants in the future. And as a spoiler alert, it's an inverse relationship. Guys, we're rapidly approaching a time when the national debt is going to start severely impacting the availability of federal grants for local governments, for schools, for nonprofits, and so on. To say that we're in trouble is an understatement. We're in big trouble. And I realize that talking about the debt gets dangerously close to talking about politics, which I generally don't like to do. But understand, this isn't a Republican or a Democrat problem. It's a mathematical problem. Uh, the numbers and time are working against us unless our elected officials do something soon. And after I run through some of the numbers to illustrate the problem, I'm going to suggest a few things that you and your organization can do to minimize the impact of decreased federal funding. And if we're in big trouble, we are, this, this points it out, we are $20.7 trillion worth of trouble. As this slide points out, as the debt and mandatory expenses increase, budgets available for the discretionary accounts, which include grants, will decrease. It's just a matter of time. And this is bad news for everyone. In federal fiscal year 2016, the year that we have the most current and complete data, the U.S. spent $240 billion just on debt interest. And that's more than these departments listed here, individually, not collectively. So if we look at a few specific examples like Veterans Affairs, in that same fiscal year, we spent $174 billion. Department of Education, $77 billion. Department of Justice, $30 billion. $30 billion. So to put that in perspective, we spent eight times more on interest to service the national debt than we did the entire Department of Justice. And that's, that is some scary, those are some scary numbers, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. This chart here compares all the major spending categories. Expenses on the right in the red box are considered manda mandatory, while defense and non-defense discretionary can be adjusted annually by Congress and, um, and through appropriations. Right now, interest on the debt represents 9% of the budget. By 2022, that increases to 12% of the budget, surpassing Medicaid and non-defense discretionary spending. And I tried to highlight that by circling it with a little yellow circle. If we combine the categories, 64% of the budget this year is for mandatory expenses. The other 36% is on discretionary expenses. By 2022, mandatory expenses will account for 73% of all federal spending, while discretionary spending will decrease to 27% of the budget. And the discretionary trend line where the grants are is headed in the wrong direction if your organization is dependent upon federal funding. And you can just see how, how it's an inverse relationship. You know, as, as one goes up, the other goes down by, by just the opposite amount there. And all these forecasts from OMB were made before the recent tax cuts and the new budget that was passed, which includes a couple of years of trillion-dollar deficits. 
So these spending estimates could be even worse for federal grants, and we just don't know it yet until the new forecasts are released. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So what can you do? You know, on, on the following slides, I have five ideas that you can start today that I believe will have a huge impact on your organization over the next five to 10 years. <clears throat> First, get as many federal grants as you can while you can. Use the funding to build your organizational capacity. Organizations leave a lot of money on the table when they apply for federal grants. They get so focused on the program they want to operate, they forget about their own organization's needs in the big picture. I like to advise clients, hey, let's put $5,000 in the budget to send a few people to a training workshop. Or how about adding $10,000 to create some professionally made communications materials for the project? You know, items that can be easily used again and again after the grant is over. So you try to think, <clears throat> excuse me, try to think beyond the routine expenses you need to be functional. People always gravitate towards buying new computers, for example. Uh, that's fine, but it's also pretty boring. Computers are so cheap now, you don't need a federal grant to upgrade your equipment. Just go buy the stuff. You know, using a federal grant to upgrade computers, it's, it's really overkill nowadays. However, 10000 on communications materials or, say, 20000 to build out a custom database for your program are expenses you probably wouldn't take on without a grant. And this is what I'm talking about for capacity. Look for expenses that serve multiple purposes. So one, obviously the expenses you need to implement your grant program. But two, expenses that expand your staff's capacity to manage the grant program and future programs, whether grant funded or not. And three, the expenses that provide your organization with resources or benefits long after the grant ends. <clears throat> Second, diversify your funding over the next 10 years. If you have investments, you know diversification is the key to protecting yourself against market downturns. The same holds true for an organization's funding. Ideally, your revenue might look something like this, say 50% donations, 20% private uh, or corporate grants and or sponsorships, 20% state and or county grants, 5% from federal grants, and maybe 5% from you know, items or service sales. Uh, you know, maybe you can create some really cool merchandise to sell, or maybe you can hire out staff as consultants to other organizations, or maybe you can make some unique videos and other content and monetize it on YouTube and Instagram or wherever. I mean, who knows? Um, of course, every organization's revenue mix will be different, adjust as necessary. This is only an example, and albeit a very, very simplistic example just to get the thought process moving. The, the key is having multiple revenue sources. Uh, it, it's troubling how many organizations still rely heavily on a single funding source. This is going to be a little more challenging for government agencies like cities, counties, and school districts. But the idea is to try and get as close to no federal funding as possible. Get to a point where federal grants are a nice thing to occasionally receive, but aren't a requirement for your organization's survival. The less dependent you are on federal grants, the more immune 
your organization will be to the wild political swings we're going to have in D.C. over the next 10 to 20 years. Now, third, increase your engagement with your federal representatives and senators. As grants become scarce and more competitive over time, you'll want to build up the relationships now so that they're aware of you later if you need assistance securing supplemental funding or help with a recommendation letter, anything like that. <clears throat> Oops, where am I here? Hold on. Okay. Fourth, increase your engagement with your local and state elected officials. Local politicians often end up working or serving in D.C. later on. Build up those relationships now. And since you'll be going after more state and local funding in that diversification effort, it's good to be plugged into this network as soon as possible. And finally, develop your board, of, uh, your board of directors. Work on recruiting new members who are well-connected and can either solicit donations from their personal and professional networks or can put your CEO in touch with potential donors. Boards will need to become increasingly active with fund development. The days of passive boards are over, period. Well, that's all I have for this brief presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me uh, through my website, thegrantdoctors.com, or anywhere on social media, at the Grant Doctors on Oh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, that's that's about it. I was trying to think of something else to say to close this out, but actually, you know what? That is the close. So anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, I appreciate the time you spent here, and um, have a good day.